Hey guys, I'm Charles Neal. Okay, this is a continuation of our making a pencil post post. Now this jig is a little different. And we gotta look at it close. What you've got here, you've basically, and this will all come together in a minute, you've got a trough. And you'll see where that comes into play. You've also got a shim attached to this side that tapers from a quarter of an inch to a half inch. Now, let me lock this down and get it in place and we'll be right back. You know, this is kind of one of the tougher parts of a pencil post, is getting that octagonal and getting everything even. Now, now before I do this, I know a lot of guys are going to look at this and you're going to cringe. This is a 45 degree chamfer bit and it's a big one. Now, the object of the game here, if you look, in this particular case, I'm above, or below rather, five-eighths of an inch, my, the top of my post. Same in the back. Now, the reason for this trough is it's also going to act as a tilt guide. And you know, and the other way to tell is you want the rail over here to be the flat beast level with your post. Now, I've got a stop set up right here. And this makes my transition point at 26 inches. By the way, I don't think I mentioned it, my total length on my post is 80 inches. The reason for that trough, number one, is it's going to give you the guide, the, the tilt rail. This means when you put a router down in here, it's got something to ride on. Okay, now make sure your bearing is engaging your, your shim. The shim's what's gonna control the taper. The other thing it's doing, because that big bit can be intimidating, and I am taking a lot of material. Now, you can also go through and sneak up on it, mean, and that's a good idea. Meaning just start going down through your post, taking a little bit off at a time. And even though that's a big bit, I think this is a, I'll check, it's a white side 2310, I think. It's well balanced. You know, it just looks intimidating. But because it's confined inside this trough, it's adding a, a measure of safety. Now here's a hint. Sand the side of your post or scrape it before you do this, okay? Um, and the reason for it is, is that once you get it fully tapered, the facets on it are pretty small, and if you're trying to use a random orbit or something, you got to be very careful that you don't rock. The best way to do it is scrape it, or simply take a really sharp hand plane and just a light, to get them nice and smooth. Although I will tell you, a good bit leaves these things just like glass.
And this is a reminder, this will stop. It just makes me index perfectly every time. And in just a matter of minutes, we've got a pencil post. Now again, this I've got at inch and seven sixteenths. Okay, that's the square I'm, once I get through tapering. From two and three quarter. That's going to put each facet at, uh, about 9 16 something like that but again by gently lowering that bit down taking little passes it doesn't take you long to get where you need to be now I mentioned that the two and three quarter is what I use typically on a king size bed uh, on a queen this, this is just a mock-up. Uh, this post is two and a half. And the top of it comes in at one and a quarter. Now, you can use either for a queen, but on a, if I'm doing a twin, then I go to the two and a half inch. On a twin, it looks a little bulky at two and three quarter. But by the same token, a two and a half looks a little delicate on a on a king. That is how we make our pencil post. Okay, guys. Um, hope that inspired you a little bit to maybe give a pencil post a shot. They're just not difficult. Um, be sure and check if you'd like to. We're going to be doing a bunch more YouTubes, um, and we're going to be doing redoing some of our older ones. Uh, I mean, some of them things are 10, 12 years old. And uh, also follow us, Charles Neal Woodworking, on Facebook. We've got a lot of good things coming your way. I'm Charles Neal. I'll catch you later.